Well, welcome back to a rather hectic, as always, Crime Watch update. There are calls still coming in from all around the country. In particular, police are delighted by the response from gay associates of Jason Swift. And also we've had some intriguing information on the murder of the Dutch girl, Marty Tamboza. Five weeks ago, Marty went cycling near her home in West Horsley, but someone had set a trap. Marty's body was found next morning in a nearby wood. Mr McFadden has been taking the calls, and I gather you've heard from another woman who's been attacked in the same area. That's, that is correct, and we would ask any other women that have uh, also been assaulted or attacked to come forward. You were telling me one man thinks he knows who the attacker is? Yes, he's asked to see the video fit again. Right, well that's the description of the man, uh, fairly dishevelled, and for particular reasons you wanted now to trace people on that train, the 607. Yes, the 607 from East Horsley to Waterloo. A ticket inspector issued a ticket to a man that allegedly got on at Cobham. We want him to come forward or any witness that saw that ticket being issued. Or a man who was actually quite frightening on the train. I gather one woman got off because she was a bit worried about him. Yes, that is so, and we'd obviously ask that woman to come forward. Right, and there's been a call from Cambridge. Tell me about that, an intriguing one. Yes, uh, a police constable there spoke to a man who reported a string across a footpath next to a railway line. The man that reported it answers our description that's been given out tonight. Right, I know you've got other calls to take. Mr McFadden, thank you very much. Sir. So. And we've been taking more calls than we dared hope on the murder of 14-year-old Jason Swift. Last summer, Jason spent two days at a caravan site in Sussex on Camber Sands. No, they let me travel on my own. It's like an adventure. I'm uh, supposed to be visiting a friend in Hastings. Well, the man who's taking the calls tonight is Detective Chief Inspector Derek Cass. I gather you just told me you've had over 100 calls. Yes, in excess of 100 calls. In particular, we've had one call from an anonymous man who lives in the Croydon area who states that he was with Jason in September of 1985. It's absolutely crucial to this inquiry that that man contact me personally within the next 10 minutes at this studio, or if not, at the Chelmsford number, or any police station. Right, if I can just read that out, it's 0245, the code for Chelmsford, 267 267. So please do ring that number if you can't get through in the next 10 minutes to the studio. Uh, also, somebody reported seeing a van near where Jason's body was found. Yes, at 7.25pm on Friday the 22nd of November last year, near very close to the scene where Jason's body was found, was a Ford Escort van, colour white, the rear doors were open and there was a cloth covering the rear index plate. We wish the driver of that car to come forward and contact us immediately. Right. Mr Cass, thank you very much. Well, now that robbery in Formby, Sir John Moores, who's 90, the founder of the Littlewood Pools Empire, was attacked in his own home, along with his housekeeper and her husband. Hey, how much are you worth, anyway? Millions. I'm a self-made man. And I started with nothing. You ever met the Queen? Yes. I think you're a snob, anyway. All you people with money are. You know, I used to work for you once. You didn't pay much, though. Where'd you work? That's enough. You've said too much. Well, those two robbers are being hunted by Detective Chief Inspector Cody, and I gather the incident room in Liverpool has been besieged with calls. Yes, we've had a large number of calls, a very, very good response up to now. With particular names that are being checked now? Yes, several names have been given to us as possible suspects, and we're checking them out. Several people wanted to hear the voice. We've got a telephone recording of the, the voice of one of the attackers. This is, this is it. Hello, Merseyside Police. Um, Personal matter. Can you tell me what it is? Well, there's been a, an accident, you see, a break in. Can you give me the address? I, I don't know the address. It's just that. Um, Maybe we should make it clear. Lots of people have, have said, is this the same man that attacked uh, Mr. Joe Anides, who we featured in last month's Crime Watch? That's not the case, you're saying. That is not the case. These two cases are not connected. Right. Several people have observed that one of these chaps said that he worked for the, Liv for the Little Woods organisation. Yes, one did, and the circumstances in which that was said would lead us to believe that it's probably true. He also used the name Tom, and again, we think that is probably his real name. OK. Mr Cody, thanks very much. Well, finally, incident desk and photocall. First of all, David, what's the news from incident desk? 
Yes, first of all, Sue, that rape near Basildon. We showed a video fit of uh, a suspect that we wanted to trace and also the fact that he had a tattoo with the word Skins underneath, below his left ear. We've had many calls telling us that Skins is a nickname attributed to the Enniskillen guards. Please, no more calls on that subject, but it may focus your attention on the possibility that he's a soldier. So if you think you know him, call us. There was the murder of the couple in the car in Sussex in a lover's lane near Rake and Kate rang once and has, she hasn't rung back again yet, has she? No, please Kate, ring us again. We must speak to you. If you wish to speak to someone in particular or a policewoman or, or anybody from the BBC, please call again this evening on the number that we're using. Alternatively, any time after 6am tomorrow to Midhurst Police Station. But there are two other points that we must stress we need to clear up. Where was Peter Thurgood on Saturday night, the 19th of April, before he uh, was murdered? And also the, the Monday night before the Tuesday when he was murdered. He should have been at a committee meeting, which he regularly attended, wasn't there. If you can help with his movements on those evenings, the investigating officer is particularly concerned about that. Right. And finally, the case of Anne Locke. Yes, she called a tube from London Weekend Television last Sunday to her home at Brookmans Park and hasn't been seen since. We've had two calls from witnesses who have led us to want to trace two men. The first, we think, was on a train, probably a student, at 9am on Tuesday the 13th of May. He's described as having an earring in his right ear, and at 9am in the morning he asked the girl for a kiss. He got on at Potter's Bar, got off at, at Brookman's Park, and hasn't been seen since. So this is while he was on the train? That's right. And the second man, the night before Anne disappeared, he was at the station at Brookmans Park and asked a witness if she knew the time of the last train. And when the train arrived, he ran off. So please, either of those two men, if, you've, if you're not involved with the disappearance of Anne, please come forward. We must clear up those leads. David, thank you. Helen, photo call. You wanted Dennis Martin here. He'd uh, jump bail. That's right, he had. He's a very distinctive man. Have been several sightings, but rather some poor information coming in. We feel that this programme will put him on the run again. So a, a second appeal to hoteliers, people who own guest houses. Keep an eye open for him. He might change his name, but he doesn't look much different. There was a Hollywood heavyweight, as he was called. This was a thug who's been robbing building societies in, uh, in North London. Uh, any, any news on that? Very precise information, which I can't go into further. Action is being taken now. OK, and the Lancashire robberies, there was a man in a helmet who looked right up at the, uh, the security camera as he was leaving. Yes, very nicely so, but the helmet has covered him partly. He was responsible for a number of attacks on estate agents and building societies in the northwest. Perhaps this second look of him might prompt someone into thinking, I know who it is, please ring. OK, Helen, thank you. Please do call if there's anything at all you feel you can add. Local numbers will follow in a moment, and they're all on CFAX if you have that on page 186. Or you could write to us at Crime Watch, BBC Television, London W12 8QT. It is all in confidence. And uh, it all helps, every bit of it. Don't have nightmares. Please sleep well. Good night. Good night.